So I want to talk Super Tuesday. Yes. What happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. But I want to start here. And I think it's really important that we lay this out. I'm really glad that you're on the day after to, to discuss this with me. Me too. Because you know history. Yes, sir. You know global history. Yes, sir. You've studied the the rise and fall of democracies. Yes, indeed. You have studied democracies churning into, falling into an authoritarian government. Mm-hmm. And we could talk the stats and data and numbers and data and numbers rather, and I will show you how some folks voted and whatever the case may be. But I really want to start here. This is not normal. That's right. This is not normal. What we saw last night with Trumpism. And I saw a lot of pundits talking and breaking down analysis and they had their graphics and they had their imagery and this, that, or the third. And very few people pointed out how this is not normal. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing. Yeah. This man who is telling us over and over who he is should not be this close to the presidency. That's right. I have to assume that this is what happened during the beginnings of Idi Amin, mm. the beginnings of Hitler. This That's is just it. not the beginnings of Mussolini. And I want you all to explain how I went from Uganda to Germany to Italy. Right? It's really important. That's right. This can happen anywhere to any group of people. Mm -hmm. And the way that people are trying to talk about this election cycle, like polling and data and exit polls really matter. <laughs> Big time. I, Big I was time. telling somebody last night, they were, they were somebody who I respect and admire and adore. We were texting and, they said, oh, well, Biden's got to get more out there. Biden's got to do that. Biden, you know, where's Biden's speech? I said, you aren't paying attention. This is not 2000. This is not 2004. This is not 2008. This is not even 2016. That's right. This is 2024. Yep. Don't you all realize that Trump does not care if he wins or loses fairly. When Trump loses in 2024, that's not going to be it. Mm -hmm. He's not going to take a loss. His supporters, this is more important, his supporters, his cult, they're not going to take a loss. That's right. January 6th was a dress rehearsal. Don't you all get it? Do do is this because we don't know history outside of American history? We've seen how this story has ended before. Mm -hmm. He's no matter what election night says in November, and I think he will lose according to election night. I truly do believe that. But that's not gonna matter. That will that's not important to him. Mm-hmm. Knowing how insidious his cult is and Mitch McConnell, that demon, just just endorsed him? Sure did. I sure. believe they're already planning if they lose on paper. This is not normal. We, we are acting like we're in a regular <laughs> election cycle and, oh, we're doing this, we're thinking this, and what do the exit polls say, and what will the Nikki, Hol yeah. the Nikki Haley voters do? Y'all aren't paying attention. He doesn't care what any other... It's him, and he's also has a vested interest in winning, not just for his ego, but to stay out of jail. That's right. I'm really concerned. W when this time is written in history, let it be known, there's been a handful of people who have said the warning signs are there. Mm -hmm. We acted like it was a normal Super Tuesday. 
We acted like it was a normal South Carolina primary. That's right. We're acting like we are in normalcy. We are not. Bro, I'll tell so I just you. wanted to start there. Uh, take it away, brother. No, I, I feel you. And, you know, for him to clinch the nomination, you know, this, this basically, you know, this early in the game, it, it's it's so telling. And we have to be mindful of the fact, you know, as we talked about before, you know, the Washington Post, it says on this newspaper, democracy dies in darkness. It dies right in front of us, right in front of us in broad daylight. And there are just too many people who haven't lived through it and seen it in the other countries, like I said, having been to almost 30 countries and seen it, you know, I've had parents who had to flee this type of thing. Uh, people who are, you know, descendants of Holocaust survivors, even Holocaust survivors who are still alive and very old right now, you know, we see this, you know, see the signs, all of us, Rwandan genocide, Congo, like all of us, Palestine, like all of us who have come from places where we've had to deal with oppression in some way, shape or form, we are seeing the signs. And when we talk about people like Hitler, people talk about Hitler as if he was somebody who came in with this massive mandate. You know, Hitler didn't have more than a third of the percentage of the population of support. Sound familiar, right? But the fact of the matter is he was able to surround himself with a lot of yes men, people who wouldn't challenge him. And one of the reasons they didn't do it is because they also wanted power too. And so people think like, oh, and then you see some of these interviews, they're like, yeah, I just think we need a strong man right now. I just think that this is the time. People don't understand that the strong man might might come in on the agenda that works for you, but after he gets in, you mean nothing to him. You mean absolutely, you become, you're basically gonna be part of the people he was oppressing because he doesn't have to answer to anybody. One of the things I heard one pundit say on, on the news the other day is that this is the, do you wanna have more elections election? You know, and that's basically what it, what it comes down to. And so when people are talking about exit polls and like, this is just a normal thing, one of the things that does give me a little bit of hope, however, is that we are seeing that Biden last night won all of the places that he won, he won with more than 70% of the vote with the exception of like two places. Trump only won with 70% of the vote in two places, which means that there is a big fracture within the Republican party of people who just don't wanna tolerate him and you know won't vote for him. And some who are Haley people might go for Biden. And I feel like now that this is a situation where you know, it's a stark contrast right now. There is no other middle ground. There's no potential Nikki or Hutchinson. Biden has these seven months, or however long, to really point these disparities out and let people know what's at stake. And the fact of the matter is, there are people who don't know the history, but there are some people who do know the history and are comfortable with what's happening right now. And you're right. Even if Biden wins, there are people who got alternative plans that by that Trump is ready to support to turn this country into a rubble phys physically or metaphorically Trump is running on an America sucks agenda and he is tapping into the heart of many people who will go with that because they feel like they don't have nothing and he doesn't need 50 percent of the voters to go along with him to do that he's just fine with his small base of support because they are willing to be violent to get to their where they need to be and they had a blueprint because they studied history they've already seen it do we know enough history to stop it